Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is a review of the problem that you did as, a, as an activity, uh, part two of the C++ object-oriented programming guessing. So here are all of the requirements from that example here on Blackboard. And I gave you three files, we'll look at that in a minute. but. Um, you're just filling in the implementation of each of the functions that are part of the uh, part of the guessing game class. So that's the only thing you need to modify I, outside of line 70 in main if you are not working on Windows because I don't think system pause works in anything but a Windows environment. And so from the end user standpoint, the only difference this time around is that we're going to maintain the number of guesses. And so we're going to you know, write some code and uh, create functions and a variable to maintain that. And when the, the game ends, we'll tell you how many guesses it took to figure out the number. And so I've given you all of the functionality. It is over-engineered to holy heck, but, but uh, it gets the point across of what Chapter 14 and Chapter 13 are all about. Object-oriented programming with constructors of all kind, copy assignment operators, and operator overloading, and all of that, all of that kind of stuff. So the public constructor is going to be very similar to what you did in part one. You just need to add the initialization of the number of guesses to zero. Uh, the copy constructor and copy assignment operator, definitely new here. And uh, we'll talk about this here in a second when I get to the video about what the difference is, just in case you're kind of wondering, because I wondered. For a while back in the day too and then it kind of all came together with the kind of example I'll be giving you and so uh, increment guess counter just does that it just increments a variable not the best way to go about doing this but again I wanted I just wanted to test out a few things uh, with the way object-oriented programming works for something like this something so simple uh, we'll need a get guesses made function and we're gonna create instead of using the the make guess function like we did previously, we're now going to overload these operators less than, greater than, and not equal to, so that we can say there's a number on the left-hand side and there's an object on the right-hand side. Give me a Boolean, yes or no. Is, you know, did I hit that target value? Is it less than, is it greater than? That's where we're going with all this kind of stuff. Okay, so let me know. And here is everything. The source.cpp file, again, is very, I mean, the, again, the end behavior, to the end user is very similar but now we have all these extra weird functions that you've never seen before or depending on you're watching the video you've probably seen it by now but again it just you know it, it just does things in a different way and gets us but it gets us to the same spot okay so I can get rid of that now and then looking over here again now we're going to fill in all the details here for the constructors and all the assignments here and so just to say coming back here here's that description the copy constructor versus the copy assignment operator. A copy constructor is used in like this first case here, the, this line of code right here, when it's copying from point A to point B, and in the line of code, it's creating the object. Because B is being does not exist until this line of code is hit, and it doesn't technically exist until the end of line, you know, the line of code is completed, where all of A gets copied into B. And so since B does not exist, but A does, the copy constructor, because I'm creating an object, gets called into action. And so that is opposed to the copy assignment operator, which at the end of the day does the same things. It takes all of the member variables of A and copies them in and makes them part of B. But the difference here is that in this case, both A and B exist. Like they, they are in code. I don't have to create a new object to get any of the job done. But at the end, that's the difference. It's not the copying. The copying is done pretty much exactly the same. It's just a matter of do I need that extra step of if I creating the object as I go, or is it already existing in my memory? And that's that's it there is to that. And then we'll go through here all the other functions. You notice this is a friend function. I don't know another way to do this, because generally if you make a uh, member operator function that it just presumes the left hand side is the game itself or whatever the object itself and the right hand side would be like the int but in this case I can flip this around by making this a, 
a global or a friend function and making it so I can put an integer on the left hand side of this operator, a guessing game on the right, and we can deduce the operator from there. You know, operator overloading is a great thing, but operator overloading is, uh, can be a pain in the butt. And like I'm kind of on the, the cusp here of uh, using these things for outside of the purposes that are normally used for operator overloading. Okay, so coming back here. So let's get ahead, let's get a start here. I am initializing the members of this class inside of the constructor. And again, maybe you've seen it in the previous video, but you want to make sure that you initialize everything you see in the header top to bottom. And you go, well, what is the big deal? In this example, it's no big deal. But if you were dealing with pointers and you were newing up memory and you were using, you know, just copying things and information from place to place, you could get yourself into a really bad place where something isn't initialized like you think it is. And you could spend maybe half a day, maybe a day or more, or you could get to the point where you believe there's a compiler malfunction uh, to not understand what is wrong. But that's just how the compiler works. Everything you see here gets, com gets compiled top to bottom from the header, no matter how you set it up in here. So anyway, target value is going to be 1 plus, this is just from what we did before, rand mod largest uh, largest possible test value. So that's all there is to that one. And so then the new variable here is guess is made. And this could just be 0. That's what it says to do here. Set guesses made to zero. Nothing goes in here. So let me just to be a professional and finish it up just so you can. I won't be smart ass this time or anything. Just say nothing here. And so that's just to tell anyone else that uh, you know what you're doing. This is intentionally blank as opposed to just left empty and you forgot to get around to it. Now for the constructor, the copy constructor, I'm going to be, instead of setting these things up, from the start, I'm going to just be copying in whatever's on the right-hand side. I just use RHO. I have another video that describes what that means in more detail. It just means right-hand side, generally, of like an operator. What's on the left-hand side is generally the object. What's generally on the right-hand side is the, is the uh, something else, either an object or a value, an integer or whatnot. But anyway, this is going to be, we're going to initialize a new object create a new object, so nothing has to go in here. Yeah, the, the, things are breaking. That's okay right now. But just to say that if I'm copying everything from point A to point B, I can just say RHS, and since I'm inside the guessing game class, I can use private data. I don't have to think anything of it. So I can take the target value from there, and I can take the target, or the guesses made. Oops, I'm sorry. I can do the same here for the guesses. All right. Been too much Python all day. Okay, so guessing game. So this is it. The right hand side's target value gets set. The right hand side's guesses made gets set. So everything makes it along for the copy. So there, we're good there for the copy constructor. And so now the copy assignment operator here equals. I take a const on the right hand side. I'm returning a reference, and that's where things you know say. This is where things get a little a little weird sometimes. And you're like, well, okay, basically what I've already done is what I want to do. Because I discussed earlier that the end result is exactly the same. We copy data from point A to point B, the same data, in, this, in the same exact way. It's just a matter of where it's going in memory, and what, what's going on in the same line of code. And so now this is where we'll, if I rebuild this, we get our first error, right? But this, oops, not even that, huh? That's a, it must be, a, nope, there's not even a warning for this? Oh, here we go. It is right here. That this guy must return a value. The equal operator here that we're working on must return a value, and that's because we have a value to return. And the reason for the reference is if I wanted to chain these things together, if I wanted to say A equals B equals C equals D in one line of code, I should be able to do that, and by passing the reference along, you're good to go with that instead of passing a copy. Because that, you know, like by passing a reference, you're passing a pointer. Because you know, I'm thinking back, and we're going to talk about pointers a lot in this class. But a memory address is a memory address, and by returning a, a reference 
or a pointer, we're passing a memory address. If we pass it by value guess, guessing game without a pointer or a reference, I'm passing a copy. So I would, even though I'm like, okay, nothing's going to change since I'm passing right to left and right to left and right to left, it's not a good thing because then if you're chaining five, six things together, you're creating five or six temporary objects that you don't even need. And like the newer uh, syntax and the newer move operations as part of uh, you know, references versus move operators and things like that, it plays a big role. A lot of C++ is the copies and extra copies that you don't intend to make. And so it's good to see that C++ is moving on with that. But to return, I can't just return, like what, I have to return me, and that's where the this comes from. But this is a pointer, and this needs to return a reference. And so everything I know about pointers means I have to dereference my pointer to be able to, re to return an address, which is the reference I'm returning. So if that sounded like the Peanuts parents in any of those shows from my childhood, and wham, 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 everything there I think was correct, so please you know, watch that again because if you don't understand, because this, this was a big deal for me. Like, what the heck? It, I just couldn't, it just for whatever me, reason, I just didn't grasp, I didn't grasp it at the time I was learning it. And then maybe on second or third pass, it kind of kind of finally made a little more sense. That I have to return me because I'm an object too, but I have to return, but I have to return it as a dereference because this is a pointer, and then I got to you know change the syntax. Up. Okay, so increment guess counter is exactly that. Like I said, it's just we're just taking the guesses made, and we're incrementing that. That's it. There are, this is an easy one. I'm just returning the variable. So you see that. This is basically a set, but I don't allow just a set to anything. I just, I'm allowed to increment it and that's all. So I can get around that by, by just looping it on the other end, on the main side, and just going, <laughs> increment this 10 times. But I definitely can't subtract, but technically I can because it's an integer. And I could just go ahead and <laughs> add this 4 billion times. I'm just blabbing about none. Whatever. So anyway, so moving forward here to finish up. I, you know, this is essentially a fancy set. And so now here on this end, filling in these guys, return is my guess less than the game's guesses made. I could, use, I could use the get function, but since again, since I'm a friend function, I'm allowed to, to access the member variables as if I could do anything else. And I could just say guess or uh, target value. So is the guess less than the target value of the game? And then this one is just flip the sign. And then this one is just sign. And that's all there is to that. Is, you know, is my guess less than? It's a bool, right? I'm returning a bool from this. Is it greater than? Is it not equal to? And that should cover that. And let's try it out. Everything compiles. Everything links. Now how does everything run? All right, so let's see. Largest possible number, 50. All right. 25. Too high. How about 1? Too low. All right. So far, so good. 12, 16, 18, 20, 22. My goodness, I'm getting the bad end of this. 23, 24. <laughs> All right. I finally got it. And it took me, did it take me nine tries? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is correct. So everything is good there. Oops. Nope. So, yep. And so the final parts here is just testing to make sure that my copy assignment operator and my copy constructor did its job. And at least it copied over the, the number of tries. And so there, I didn't want to complicate matters because there's no, I don't think there's a reason for you to ever have a public function that shouts out your target value because people could use that to cheat, especially on the API side. And so what I wanted to do here is I could just put a copy, con or I could put a, whatchamacallit here, I can put a breakpoint, and I can run my program again, and I have to, I have to win first, so I'm saying like, how many, okay, three, number two, yay, I did it, okay, so I got it in first guess, and so the game, you can see here, I mouse over everything, the target value was two, the number of guesses made was one, copy doesn't exist yet, so it's all garbage, you can see it's all garbage data, and so I can F11 to go into that constructor over here. 
F10 to go, okay, set up, set up, and come back, and then copy is now target value 2, guess is name 1. So it does print out that it took me one guess, just like I was expecting, but now I also doubly made sure that by looking over this, I could see that the two objects have the same data, but obviously the two objects are in different places in memory. So it's copies of the data have been made. It's been a deep copy, or I guess if you want to think of it as a, yeah, it's still a shallow copy, but it's still exactly what we needed to get done to go from right to left here. Okay, so then I can test this one more time to make sure that the copy assignment operator works. And then, so like this, copy equals, this goes into the copy assignment operator. We just went through this guy here, right, the, the copy constructor. So now this is what we're doing, and it, this should do exactly the same stuff since I just changed the syntax to make it equals instead of uh, uh, ex you know, explicit initialization. And so I go, 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 return, come back, and I go, okay, game is 2-1, copy is 2-1, and it did what it's supposed to do again. So, and then print out, so everybody's happy. So that covers this problem, everything there is to it. Sorry for going a little long on talking about this. The only tech talk I get to do, I guess, <laughs> I delay the inevitable of going back to everyday life. So anyway, so... Um, if you have any questions, comment here or send it to swordb at cod.edu. And uh, thanks for sticking with it, as always. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.